lot of my readers um, said that uh, as they read the three books, that they found them very interchangeable. So uh, you don't have to read them in order to, to really enjoy them. Uh, so I'm going to begin by reading uh, the second book, which is Heart Attack at Red Rock Canyon. Uh, and hopefully that will give you a, uh, that will entice you, uh, as I like to say, the journey to have it all, adventure, life, and love in the pursuit of happiness. Okay, Heart Attack at Red Rock Canyon, where life and death are equal partners. Prologue. I could be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. But I am as constant as the northern star, of whose true fixed and resting quality. There is no fellow in the firmament. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. They are all fire, yet everyone doth shine. So in the world tis furnished well with men, and men are flesh and blood and apprehensive. Yet in those numbers I do know but one, that unassailable holds on his rank, unshaped of motion, and that I am he. As a freshman in high school, I first read these words spoken by Julius Caesar, and my heart changed. There was nothing life could throw at me that I would not and could not defeat, because I was he. So now here it is 50 years later and I went another change of heart in my never-ending search for internal peace. Just 30 minutes earlier I was marveling within myself at how good my body was responding to this difficult hike in Red Rock Canyon. I felt strong, blessed, and confident that I was on track to conquer Gunsight Notch. But within a matter of seconds, I had transitioned from unwavering confidence to complete despair. It was clear that something was deathly wrong. The dull pain I was withstanding in the center of my chest seemed unusual. I had to take shorter and slower breaths to lessen its ache. It felt like congestion from a chest cold, except I didn't have a chest cold. I stood frozen in time, clutching the handle of my trekking pole to steady myself on the mountain's edge. I could no longer entice my body to climb. The sounds of nature that surrounded me faded away, and all I could hear was the relentless pounding of my heart, beating against the sternum, trying to unearth more oxygen out of the high altitude. I closed my eyes and consciously attempted to catch my breath again, but my breath could not be caught. Chapter 1, Gunsight Notch My body waned. While trying to make sense of its gravity, I became confused. Fatigue was a normal experience when climbing to a mountaintop. Total exhaustion, on the other hand, was not. As of two minutes ago, there was nothing normal about this adventure. I could not wrap my head around what was happening inside my mind, my body, or my soul to cause this aberration. My nerves began to fray as the dilemma I faced became more and more alarming. Literally and figuratively, standing at the precipice of Gunsight Notch 
I needed to remain composed and think my way out of this unbalance that I was feeling in myself. One breath, one step at a time. Beginning with my elevated blood pressure, I needed to cool my body down. So I unzipped my Timberland hiking jacket, allowing the breeze to cool my torso. Even with the cooler morning temperature, I noticed that my shirt was drenched with sweat. Fuck! That meant I was probably dehydrated. I could feel the dryness in my throat and wondered why I hadn't noticed it before. Suddenly, I felt thirsty and needed water from my backpack. My brain was moving a mile a minute as it reached for the backpack strap, but my arm remained frozen. It would not give my brain the authority to control its movements. There was obviously something more immediate than dehydration going on within my system. The water would have to wait. I felt this moment was an impasse. Believing in the mind over matter theory, I was taken aback that matter had weakened the mind enough to finally reign triumphant. So I decided to hush my fear and listen to my inner being. This allowed me to pick up on other more subtle clues that my physical functions were experiencing a major shutdown. For the first time in my hiking life, it felt as if the wilderness had, had beaten me. I questioned if I would even be able to convince myself to continue beyond this point. Taking further stock of my predicament, I looked up towards the cold and realized that even taking a single step towards the summit was going to be problematic. On the other hand, the descent would improve my oxygen intake, so I quickly turned my attention to the valley floor from whence I came. The journey down the mountain appeared futile as well. In my mind's eye, what should appear to be a simple two-mile hike back to civilization looked like an eternity. My energy was totally spent, so I leaned heavily on the tracking pole to help me relax and conserve as much energy as possible. Once again, my body waned and I could feel my knees buckle. Exhaustion was the only answer. I was barely able to stop myself from flat out falling on my face by forcing more weight onto that trekking pole to hold myself upright. Next to me was a boulder, the height of a chair, so I decided to sit, rest, and gather myself. Sitting on the rock did nothing to slow my breathing or relieve the pain inside my chest. Resting my head in the palm of my hand, I could not understand why my body was experiencing a total breakdown. I became seized by fear again. My mind quickly grabbed hold of that panic looming inside me as I recovered my equanimity. Options. I needed options 